Hollywood stars. They sparkle with brilliancy and illuminate our lives. Over the past century, these glittering figures, who are blessed with extraordinary talents, have shared with us the enchanting gift of entertainment. Since the beginning of motion picture history, audiences have been captivated by these celebrated icons, including early silent film stars such as Charlie Chaplin and Mary Pickford, favorite dancers such as Ginger Rogers, Gene Kelly, and Fred Astaire, striking personalities such as Marlon Brando, James Dean, and Marilyn Monroe, and classic megastars such as Clark Gable, Debbie Reynolds, Humphrey Bogart, Tony Curtis, and Elizabeth Taylor. In many parts of the globe, these splendid aristocrats of the silver screen touch the hearts of millions through their timeless works of art. Many a luminous star shines and thrives in that center of universal fascination, the entertainment capital of the world, Hollywood. At the dawn of the 21st century, Hollywood is witnessing a welcome appearance of a star of inimitable qualities. Considered by many as a precious and beloved jewel, Supreme Master Ching Hai has traveled the world to share her message of peace, wisdom, and love to people in all continents, embracing all races, creeds, and nationalities. Her ceaseless efforts to uplift humankind extend far beyond her roles as renowned meditation teacher and philanthropist. For Supreme Master Ching Hai also graces the earth through her natural artistry as a painter, poet, composer, and designer. Her exquisite works, which communicate distinctive yet universal messages, have been well received in many corners of the world. By popular demand, Supreme Master Ching Hai's clothing and jewelry designs, which are admired and embraced by many international dignitaries, have been on exhibition tours in fashion capitals of the world, such as New York, Paris, London, and Milan. An accomplished poet since her youth, her poems have been published in prestigious newspapers and magazines in Europe and Asia. Many have been set into songs by noted composers in the United States and abroad. In recent years, Supreme Master Ching Hai's elegant poems were set to music and arranged by Oscar and Emmy-winning composers. In December 1998, as a moving tribute to her, these works were world premiered at a magnificent benefit concert entitled One World of Peace Through Music at the prestigious Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles. The concert brought together over 100 prominent Hollywood entertainers, including an outstanding 65-piece orchestra comprised of distinguished musicians who regularly perform for the annual Academy Awards. The night of the One World of Peace Through Music concert, over 6,000 audience members were taken on an awe-inspiring journey of beautiful music, poetry, and drama, hosted by legendary actress Debbie Reynolds and the charismatic John Mushita, former World Guinness record holder as fastest talker. On stage that evening, at the enthusiastic encouragement of the cheering crowd, Supreme Master Ching Hai spontaneously accepted the surprise invitation of Miss Reynolds and award-winning composer Peter Boyer to sing a song she had written years back in dedication to the world's suffering refugees. I want to break these chains, oh my desperation. The memorable One World of Peace Through Music concert was decidedly a marvelous opportunity for Hollywood stars and American entertainers to become acquainted with the noble works of Supreme Master Ching Hai. Footage of the impressive VIP reception following the One World Benefit concert, intimate and candid interviews with artists, and Supreme Master Ching Hai's personal appearances at Grand Hollywood Galas will offer a rare glimpse of the enlightened master's loving presence among the stars. From one creative soul to another, Supreme Master Ching Hai's saintly heart has touched the lives of many individuals who express deepest praise and admiration for Supreme Master's artistic talents as well as her benevolent mission. We invite you to enjoy this exclusive presentation 
of Supreme Master Ching Hai and celebrated American stars. After the One World of Peace Through Music benefit concert, the VIPs and performers had the opportunity to converse with Supreme Master Ching Hai during the post-reception party. Prior and subsequent to the concert, some of the talents were interviewed regarding their thoughts about their work on Supreme Master Ching Hai's poetry and music. We would like to bring to you a brief introduction of these remarkable artists and their interviews. Oscar and four-time Emmy Award winner Bill Conti is one of Hollywood's most sought-after composers and conductors for both film and television. Mr. Conti has been the music director of the Academy Awards for the past 14 years, a record achieved by no other person in his field. In 1989, he was honored with a star bearing his name on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Bill Conti won an Oscar for the best original score for The Right Stuff and received two Oscar nominations for his songs in the James Bond picture, For Your Eyes Only, and the Academy Award-winning best picture, Rocky. He has scored over 70 feature films, including The Thomas Crown Affair, The Five Rocky Films, Private Benjamin, Rookie of the Year, The Adventures of Huck Finn, and the three Karate Kid films. His compositions have sold well in excess of eight million albums. Bill Conti has also composed some of the most recognizable themes for television broadcast, including those of the 1984 Los Angeles Olympics, Dynasty, Cagney and Lacey, Falcon Crest, ABC's Good Morning America, Inside Edition, Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, and many more. In 1995, the American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers awarded Bill Conti the Golden Soundtrack Award for Lifetime Achievement. Mr. Conti graduated with a bachelor and a master's degree at the nation's top music school, Juilliard School of Music in New York. In the One World of Peace Through Music Benefit Concert, Bill Conti arranged and conducted Supreme Master Ching Hai's song, I Will Forever Love You, as a tribute to Supreme Master. He shared his thoughts in an interview prior to the concert as follows on December 8, 1998. Well, uh, the idea of uh, using music as a voice of peace, of course, is so much better than, than the use of music for war because music historically can be used for either because it affects your emotions. Mm -hmm. Music has always been used to either calm you out, let you seek the more spiritual side of yourself. However, they can beat the drums and, and also evoke this feeling 
of going to take another country. Right. It, music has the ability to change you. Mm -hmm. because music is the ultimate fantasy. It is not literal. It is not something that you can touch or you can feel or you can see. It enters into you through your ears and you're affected emotionally by music. So the idea of, of using music for peace is so much better than the other ways that we could use music. This special piece that was written by Summer Ching Hai mm -hmm. was a piece of music that I have arranged I think in a very special way to present both the mu music and the lyric and try to evoke something in, in, in the audience when it's being performed because that is the secret of music. When Beethoven is being played, when you hear Beethoven, his soul is actually, his spirit is in the room with you. Now when the Beethoven symphony stops, or anyone's piece of music stops, it's like they left the room. But while it was being played, not like this, that you can touch and you can break and you can admire. When the music is playing, that person, in this case, uh, Summa Ching Hai, but w w during my music, that'll be how I feel about music, about life, about love, about everything. And, and when, when you hear any composer's live in the hall. If it's done very well, which I intend to do, then something very special should happen. Right. And I'm talking on this emotional level. So I'm looking forward to the performance of that piece, along with, uh, with my own, and, and hearing uh, the other poetry that's been set by other composers. I know uh, of uh, uh, the powerful words and, and design mm -hmm. and good works that Summa Ching Hai has done, uh, which seems to be substantial. I received a copy of the music and words that Summa Ching Hai did. Okay. And so I had put it in a form for the orchestra mm -hmm. and myself mm -hmm. and, and, and voices to sing it oh. in a special way. It's called an arrangement mm -hmm. of her music that I have been dealing with and still dealing with, still putting it together, refining it, so that the presentation will be very special. We have Fred Carlin, who you know. Yes, I do. He's a friend, a very good composer, who has, uh, I believe, set some of the lyrics, some of the poetry of Summa Ching Hai. I have not heard the piece, of course, because it'll be a premiere. Mm -hmm. I will probably hear it in rehearsals. But a rehearsal isn't quite the same thing as bringing in hundreds or thousands of people to participate with you. Mm -hmm. Because when that music is in the air, then they, they don't even have to pay real special attention. It's just there, and it's going to affect you one way or another. Right. And, 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 the, and the important thing is to try to, to communicate, at least from the composer's standpoint, mm -hmm. what he's feeling, what he felt about anything that, through that piece of music. Right. So when that piece, piece of music comes alive, there are in our orchestra, at least 60, 65 musicians that are playing. That goes into the air. Hundreds of thousands of people will be listening to it. And that's magic. Exactly. And you know a lot about that. The, one of the most inspirational films, Rocky, you scored the piece for, uh, for yes, that. Yes, I did. Back in 1976, when I was much younger, of course. And, and it kind of began in a funny way, because the director had all these... Uh, film footage of Sylvester Stallone running and training and mm -hmm. working out. He says, well, give me a piece of music about a minute, just about a minute long, so I can cut this footage together. It's the training montage, right? right. Mm -hmm. So I gave him a minute worth of music. He says, well, I need a little bit more. Could you give me another 30 seconds? Okay, so I wrote another 30 seconds, and he put more film to it, and he says, you know, there's this shot with him, the medicine ball, and doing these push-ups, and could you give me another 30 seconds? <laughs> so the point is, we went from a minute all the way to three minutes, right. but in 30-second increments, so we ended up with what was called a song at the end, but in the beginning, it wasn't called that at all. I did a James Bond movie, and uh, the name of the movie was For Your Eyes Only, and... Uh, Sheena Easton sang the song for me. 
It was nominated uh, also for an Academy Award, and uh, I will be performing that. And some of the music from television that I've uh, written in the past, uh, themes for television shows like Dynasty, Falcon Crest, Cagney and Lacey, Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, and uh, other material, including uh, a piece of music which I actually won an Academy Award for, which is the music from The Right Stuff. That must have been the most amazing moment. What was that like? It was the only moment in, in 13 years of being connected with the Academy as music director. <laughs> in other words, I think this coming year will be the 14th time or something like that. And I've always been either in the pit or on the stage conducting the orchestra. And I've been nominated uh, three times for Academy Awards, but I, I was conducting and I lost. But the only time that I sat in the audience for the Academy Awards when I was nominated, I won. And we came to that night and we're sitting and they put all the nominees all in the same section. And in the same row with me were the other composers who were nominated. John Williams was there, uh, many other, four other composers. And we were talking during the evening, as friends do, you know, and colleagues. And that minute, when it got to that point, when they were going to say the winner is, well, all of a sudden we were chatting and being very nice to each other. And all of a sudden, I hated every one of them. <laughs> Oh, no. And we were staring straight ahead, like, no, I didn't hate them, but you know that feeling, right. you're very friendly, now that yeah. minute comes, now you're like this, you turn to stone. And my wife was so excited, so that when they said my name, they said, and the winner is, well, I thought my wife was going to jump up and down or be really excited about it, and she was just like this. <laughs> so I gave her a little kiss, and I Aww. said, would you hold my program, I have to actually go up and get this award. <laughs> so I went up. And then they take you to some publicity behind the things. Then I come back to my seat. And I say to my wife, I said, what is this? You were excited for about a month, <laughs> running around the house. And, and now I win. And you go, you just go like this. <laughs> says, you know, it dawned on me when, when they announced your name that you were going to leave me sitting here with all the people that were losing. So I didn't want to. Aww. She's very nice. Aww. She's a wonderful person. That must have been so amazing. It was exciting. And you won six Emmys. I won Emmys, yes. Emmys. It's incredible. I've, uh, uh, for various things, including mm -hmm. musical director of the Academy Awards show, uh, and two times I've won for that. So I have my share of awards. I'm very fortunate. Exactly. Right. So how did you come to be involved with the Summa Ching High organization? Uh, I was asked whether I would be interested in participating. And uh, I was, of course. It seemed to me to be a worthy cause. And then uh, it kind of grew and grew and grew. And, and as to what the planning of the, of the, the event would be, uh, I'm only a part of the event. But uh, uh, as it came together, at least I came to understand more of it, it became uh, uh, much more exciting for me to, to, to be a part of a concert for a cause that is, is more than worthy. I mean, I do concerts regularly, and the cause is to play music. Right. And, uh, uh, and this one is to play music with a, with a tremendous intention of bringing peace to the world. Mm. Can't think of anything better. Yeah. When you think of uh, uh, the tragedy of listening to some of the music that's on the airwaves mm. all the time. Uh, that's not one world of peace through music. That's about trying to sell a record, mm -hmm. and there's nothing wrong with trying to sell a record. But how do you sell a record? You sell it through the young people. Mm -hmm. Now, the young people should be guided. Right. And if we're talking not about peace, mm -hmm. love, and the things that we should be talking about, well, they could be just as easily excited about other things, and they are. And uh, Plato, so long ago, wanted children only to have music and gymnastics for all their youth, only because the inroads to your emotions, the way to teach how to get in touch with your emotions is through music. Now, emotions have the, the entire range of peace, love, hate, war. All of those things are possible to you. So. He presumed that only the good should be 
brought out through music. And if more people would do that, bring out through mm -hmm. music the higher ideals rather than the lower ideals, mm -hmm. I imagine we could sell as many records. Our goal is to be better. It's not to be the same. And it's not to, to we should move to the higher place of, of the human, which is if he's half animal and half spirit, mm -hmm. well, he, he should be moving towards the spiritual, right. always moving towards the spiritual. So the idea of, of using music for peace is so much better than the other ways that we could use music. The concept is certainly the best one I could think of. Exactly. And I didn't think of it. <laughs> so right, right. We do have someone else to thank and we'd like to do it like musicians do through music and it is actually for the person who has inspired the evening and we simply would like to say thank you a piece of music that you have written words and music that we would like to perform for you Fred Carlin has scored over 150 motion pictures and television projects. With a four-time Oscar nomination, he won the Oscar for Best Song for his composition For All We Know in the motion picture Lovers and Other Strangers, starring Diane Keaton. For All We Know was also recorded by the Carpenters and received a gold record. Fred Carlin also received a Grammy nomination for his score of The Sterile Cuckoo, Featuring his Oscar-nominated song, Come Saturday Morning, sung by distinguished actress and singer Liza Minnelli. Carlin received 12 Emmy nominations and won an Emmy for Best Original Score for the television landmark, The Autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman, starring famed actress Cicely Tyson. Among other movies he scored include Michael Crichton's Westworld, Yours, Mine, and Ours, starring Lucia Ball and Henry Fonda. Loving Couples, starring Shirley MacLaine and Susan Sarandon. Future World, starring Ewell Brenner. The Stalking Moon, starring Gregory Peck, and many others. Fred Carlin's book, Listening to Movies, The Film Lover's Guide to Film Music, and On the Track, A Guide to Contemporary Film Scoring, are used by film composers in universities worldwide. In addition to his distinguished career and musical achievements for the Benefit Concert, One World of Peace Through Music, Fred Carlin set Supreme Master Ching Hai's poems to music, creating an extraordinary 45-minute symphonic portrait. Prior to the concert, he was interviewed by Coast Radio 103.5 FM and KEZY Radio 95.9 FM. Mr. Carlin expressed his thoughts about the concert in his piece in the following interview on November 15, 1998. I've called the piece the piece, the piece of music, the Peace Seeker, mm -hmm. and that is a phrase from one of her poems that's a, really a short little fable telling the story of a woman who, who metaphorically represents maybe all of us who is in search of peace and happiness, and who finally discovers that after looking everywhere for it, it's right there inside her. And um, just as she becomes content and blissful with the thought that she's found peace and happiness, she looks around her and finds that nobody else really is finding this, that there's still so many people um, suffering from not really finding themselves in their center and what it is that's really important to them. And so she begins to cry, and the tears 
become the stars to help light the way and remind everybody uh, for, for eternity of the compassion that this uh, wise person feels. And so my musical piece, based on her poems, um, tells really about the, the, uh, the sense, the deep sense and intense sense of compassion, which her lyrics are all, all talk about, and about the search for inner peace. And my, uh, my assumption always has been that one by one, if we find that inner contentment and peace and find what's true to ourselves and, and what's important in life, really, mm -hmm. that if we all found that, Bingo, one world peace. I see. The title of the concert is One World of Peace Through Music. Would you say that the poems and the music you've adapted to them uh, convey this message of some way that we can all uh, seek peace in this world? I think it's subtle, mm -hmm. and maybe that's good. It's not preachy. There are, out of the 40 minutes of music, there are five folk rock songs based on poems of hers that have become lyrics through this process that I've used to adapt her poetry. And basically, they're concerned with how, how painful it can be. It's the other side. It's, it's so painful to sometimes feel this compassion for others and wonder what, what one can do about it. So given that sensibility, which the poems express, uh, I've, I've made a setting which I hope eventually will create the sensibility by the end that, that the answer, you know, it may be an unanswered question, what can we do? On the other hand, it may be answered individually by people. The message is find, find your, inner, your inner self and find your happiness and your peace through that. But it's, as I say, it's subtle. It's not preachy, and uh, you draw your own conclusions to it, just as is so true with, with uh, poetry and with her poems specifically. Mm -hmm. It's going to be just a terrific evening of entertainment. Mm -hmm. As I say, uh, if there's a message to my piece, mm -hmm. uh, it's subtle. And especially insofar as the poetry is expressing the difficulty with dealing with the, the intense emotions of compassion and, uh, and love of fellow, fellow mankind that we can have without knowing how, what to do about this. Mm -hmm. And um, so obviously any positive message that comes out of that, you bring a lot to it mm -hmm. because you've got to supply the answers. You're yeah. the listener. And, um, so I don't want to overemphasize that. I think that it's an entertainment as well, and that, that uh, my approach, even with the orchestra and the choir and all that, and it being a, um, um, having some elements of being a symphonic work, mm -hmm. it was really a folk rock work. And has it been a positive experience for you? Have you enjoyed your interaction with these poems and manipulating them and laying the music to them? It's, it really has been terrific, mm -hmm. and the group has been extremely supportive um, to my creative vision as I've seen this thing evolve. Mm -hmm. And um, that is, if not rare, it's at least uncommon. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's a tremendous pleasure for, for somebody who's working to, to, uh, toward a vision and to allow that vision to evolve because it changes. Mm -hmm. The vision can be clear and still you find it, it still continues to grow and evolve uh, during the whole course of your work frequently. And um, so it's been a tremendous pleasure in working with the materials. Uh, I saw many, many of her poems mm -hmm. and was able to select those that I felt I could adapt and put together into a continuity, mm -hmm. which I think I've done with this 40 minutes, starting, starting with the, uh, the po poetic version of the fable I told you a, a little while ago. Now, I know you've composed quite a bit of music for movies and television events as well. How does writing the music to go with these poems compare to the many other things you've done throughout your career? Well, in one sense, it's been quite similar, and yet it's been enough different to be refreshing as mm -hmm. well. It's been very nice that way, because my background is to look at a, at a finished or nearly completed dramatic work, mm -hmm. film of some kind, and then to imagine what the best possible um, music could be for it to, to bring the most to the film, to add the most to it. And so, um, this has been, in a way, very similar, except I've had to help create the dramatic framework that I then would respond to as though it were a film. Mm -hmm. And I've done that by taking, uh, looking at so many of her poems and then choosing the sections from the poems and so on that I feel would help to make a continuous statement and a continuous whole dramatically. Mm -hmm. And then having established that framework, um, written the songs, which I've done, and now five songs in it, and now um, am finishing the 
the rest of the music that mm -hmm. supports it. Mm -hmm. So it's been very similar, but just enough dissimilar to be really exciting, like a new experience. Yeah. Have you found that the poems provided a powerful message um, similar to the visual impact uh, you might draw from um, sitting down and reviewing a movie that you're uh, writing music for? Well, they do in the sense that they each, they each really are kind of a character. Mm -hmm. And that particular character is speaking. Mm -hmm. Her, it's always a woman, her, her point of view, because they really are very personal expressions of Soma Ching Hai during the period of time or periods of time that she wrote these poems. Mm -hmm. Some of them speak, for example, the first one called um, Winter Song, speaks of a moment in this character's life when walking through a, a desolate town in the cold of winter with snow falling, she happens upon a statue. Mm -hmm. Now there's nothing more inanimate and, and cool or cold or dispassionate than a statue, so it's a very strong image. And she senses or feels that this stone statue is in fact feeling compassion for those who suffered in this world. Mm -hmm. Well, if the stone statue can feel that way, this is very strong and certainly makes us and, and feel that we, we, we might. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, it, it's, it's a very moving experience to the character who is, whose lyrics become the character of this song. So um, obviously, there's no answer within that statement. Mm -hmm. There's only the, the statement that in fact this exists and that the stone statue and this woman, the character, mm -hmm. feel this compassion. Mm -hmm. So that's her character. Uh, another one, and I'll mention this specifically because of the high contrast, it's set right in the middle of the piece and it's called He Couldn't Buy. Mm -hmm. And um, basically it is the story and the character is telling her own story again of a, of a woman who has had two choices clearly at one moment in her life. Mm -hmm her love and her passion. And I think this can be taken on a, on a non-specific, could be sure. any passion. Sure. And you can read it however you want, which mm -hmm. good poetry always lets you do. So it is the love of, in her heart. And she has either to choose that or to choose security. Mm -hmm. Character chose the security. And the character then sings about that. And really what, this, what the poem says is, is that although um, you have given me security, you couldn't buy my heart, which is still over across the sea. And that also can be taken to be literal. Mm -hmm. She left home and she left whatever her heart represents, mm -hmm. a man or some other love in life. Mm -hmm. uh, or, or not, it can be taken specifically or metaphorically. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very powerful, and I've said it as the most rock-oriented song, okay. so that it's not, it's not sentimental at all. It sounds much more like a piece that Madonna might sing. <laughs> She sketches very specific characters in very specific moments. Mm -hmm. And uh, those, are nice, those are nice poems and nice lyrics to work with because they, they give you something tangible mm -hmm. that still has a more universal or a more, a more of an expanded mm -hmm. uh, view of, the, of life. Yes, whenever the message has this many levels of depth, then I'm very happy. Maria Newman is the youngest daughter of the legendary composer Alfred Newman, a nine-time Academy Award-winning composer of 250 movie scores. The Newmans is one of the oldest and most respectable musical families of Hollywood. Growing up in an intense musical environment, Maria Newman graduated from Yale University with high honors. Since then, she has received numerous commissions and awards for her compositions for orchestral, choral, and chamber music, as well as the scoring of Mary Pickford's silent classic, Daddy Long Legs. Ms. Newman is currently conductor in residence at the Icicle Creek Music Center in Washington. Maria Newman's husband, George Thatcher, is an acclaimed composer, songwriter, lyricist. His song, Send Me a Lover, was recorded by both Celine Dion and Taylor Dane, charting heavily in both Billboard and radio and records. Mr. Thatcher co-wrote the song River of Love with David Foster, which was used as the Canadian anthem for the United Nations Year of the Family. His song, Faith, 
was recorded by the popular group Air Supply, and its French translation, Fay Confiance, was recorded by French Canadian artist Mario Palachat. In the interview prior to the concert, Maria Newman and George Thatcher expressed their thoughts as follows on December 3rd, 1998. Well, uh, the December 18th concert, we have, or actually I have written a piece um, uh, based on Sumi Ching Hai's uh, The Prince, a poem called The Prince, which is absolutely beautiful. I picked it because it has so much music in the words right away, and I felt that it would be uh, lovely to write a piece of music to it. Um, and it's called The Prince. She wrote it in Monaco, I believe. Um, and it, it to, you know, when you talk about poetry, the great thing about it is that one can interpret poetry in many different ways. Mm -hmm. But to my interpretation of the poem, um, it's about apparently a very beautiful, wonderful man and somebody who she seems uh, to be in love with mm -hmm. that creates a really hypnotic, whirling uh, evening for her. So, like, you know, feverish. The words, the way, the way the words flow together, the imagery. I remember reading it. Um, we read through, she, they gave us a, quite a few of her poems and they were all beautiful. And, but this one, I, I know, it's, it struck me as one that, that would really suit uh, Maria's writing style and, and what we're trying to achieve, writing more of an art song than a, uh, than a pop song or a, mm -hmm. a commercial style song. That's right, which is a good point, is that this, this, def this piece is definitely an art song and not a, uh, not a pop song. We've set it in a, in a uh, definite, I don't want to say classical because uh, classical is an era, like the era of Mozart, but uh, maybe we can say a more classic style something that hopefully will... Um... More traditional, a traditional orchestra, more traditional or harmonic concepts. I think it's a, a very, very beautiful piece for a very beautiful poem. Anne-Marie Ketchum is the soprano. Um, she is so wonderful. She almost makes you want to be her when, when she's on the stage. She's so engaging. I can't speak highly enough of her. A lot of my peers, people I work with, will be in the orchestra that I'm conducting that night. And they're great players. They perform most of the time on movie scores, uh, these people who are going to be performing for One World that evening. Um, they are probably the most heard performers on the face of the planet mm -hmm. because, you know, you go to a movie, people all over the world go to movies, and they hear these people play all the time. Right. So when you come to this orchestra, you'll be hearing one of the most famous orchestras uh, on the face of the planet. So I think that's really neat, again, in bringing, uh, in bringing the whole point of One World together. You are the daughter of Academy Award-winning uh, conductor-composer Alfred Newman. That's right. And through his music, he's yeah. uh, boy, he's everywhere. Uh, every just for you know those who don't know, the 20th Century Fox uh, fanfare, you know the dun, 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 is is my dad. That's just one of, of many, 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 many things that he he composed, of course. Uh, but being the daughter of a man like that, of course. I think it's great. As I grew older and, and heard the effect that his music had on so many people and so many varying people, uh, I realized that uh, this was truly a gift. Musicians and artists in general, what would the world be without uh, artists and what they give to the world in that um, they bring so much joy to people? Um, but furthermore, I just wanted to say that in, in uh, the case of Ching Hai, uh, this is, has gone far beyond that. Not only does she create uh, beautiful art in every sense of the word, but she creates music within uh, her, other, her other art. When we met first with the people from the organization, um, they brought us the most, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, the most beautiful artwork that she had done. Mm -hmm. uh, amazing um, designs, clothing designs, jewelry designs, fan designs, lamp designs, furniture designs, um, poetry. Everything you can imagine, the woman is, uh, is pretty amazing. I mean, I think it's very impressive that someone can, can be involved in the arts. I mean, I know a lot of people in the arts who are trying to make a living and, and trying to do well, and some who do do very well, but here is someone who, is, who takes what she has created and turns around and gives back right, to exactly. the people who really need it. And mm -hmm. that is something which is very rare and very inspiring to see. And I see some people who do very, very well, and um, a lot of people give back, but I've never seen anybody give back to, remember, on this level. It's just when, very impressive. She gives back not only through her art, but 
through the uh, the earning of funds for these organizations. So she truly gives back, in, in both literally and figuratively speaking. Um, so it's really uh, quite an honor to be working in this situation with this organization. We feel we feel very lucky. I've always felt that music um, is one of the most powerful forces of at least making people aware of the problems that exist, of our similarities, um, of the need to, you know, the fact that uh, we are all human beings mm -hmm. with the same needs, the same desires, the same need to love, to be cared for, to nurture, and to be nurtured. Um, I did a a work with David Foster a while ago um, called River of Love mm -hmm. and it's one of the things that I was at the time was proudest of and still am because basically what it said is that you know all nations all people all are one I think the thing that that is wonderful about this this program it seems to me based on what I know of her that her message and her mission is to bring to people the, the, the knowledge that that we are one and that we do share this world of love. And I think that's the message and uh, the mission that she tries to put forward and, and a lot of what this evening is about. Peter Boyer is a multi-award winning composer, conductor, and scholar. His works have been praised in publications such as the New York Times, Los Angeles Times, USA Today, American Record Guide, and Hartford Courant. His tone poem, Titanic, has been performed by distinguished orchestras around the country. His work, The Phoenix, was premiered at the prestigious Carnegie Hall in New York. He was the orchestrator for the MGM animated feature film, Babes in Toyland. Mr. Boyer completed his doctoral work at the University of Hartford and has been working with Oscar award-winning composer Elmer Bernstein. He currently is an active conductor of the American Jazz Philharmonic for its Henry Mancini Institute. Prior to the concert, Peter Boyer expressed his thoughts in the following interview on November 27, 1998. I am a, a composer, conductor, a scholar, professor, and uh, have been composing largely for the contemporary classical world uh, for about the past 10 years. I wrote a uh, what's called a tone poem, which is a piece for large orchestra uh, inspired by the story of the Titanic. So this piece has been performed uh, a number of times around the country by very fine orchestras. Uh, just a few weeks ago it was performed by the Toledo Symphony in Toledo, Ohio, and the following week by the Fresno Philharmonic in Fresno, California. I wrote a big piece called The Phoenix, a big tone poem, eight minutes for a very large orchestra, 9,500 pieces. And that was premiered at Carnegie Hall in May. Uh, so that's one of the more exciting things of the last uh, year, year and a half. And you did Babes in Toyland? I was uh, an orchestrator on that particular film, uh, which is now running pretty regularly on the Disney Channel since it's the holiday season. Wonderful. And you're putting some music to Supreme Master Ching Hai's poetry? Well, um, as, as a composer, uh, you know, when one is given uh, a piece of poetry to set, then that is a different kind of a process than when one simply writes a piece of instrumental music. When you're setting a poem, every poem has its own rhythm, it has its own structure, and so you have to, as a composer, respect that rhythm and that structure in determining what uh, your role will be in terms of creating music. So I've taken this poetry and tried to find the essence of what it's about, which seems to be about uh, love and longing and commitment, and uh, try to reflect that somehow in the music. And would you like to share any of the poems? Sure. Uh, it's uh, organized in, in quatrains, in groups of four lines. And so I've organized my music uh, in these sort of four line groups. So for example, uh, a recurring theme in the poem is, is the three words, how many miles? And this recurs several times the first time is in the second quatrain where the poem reads, how many miles to the west side, how many miles to paradise, how many miles to your heart, how many miles to mine. So I've actually taken uh, those three words and made that sort of the theme of the song. Uh, and so that is a recurring motif and I have that music uh, enter at the beginning, return in the middle and then return at the end to sort of round it out. Uh, and finally, in, in, the, in the final moments of the song, uh, that actually appears purely musically without the words and then 
the singer um, comes back in for a final time to close it out. So that theme of longing, of, of wishing to uh, know how long it will be before one is reunited with one's loved one, uh, that's sort of become the theme for my setting. So tell us also how you're going to be conducting Fred Carlin's The Peace Seeker. This is uh, going to be quite a large and uh, challenging work to organize. Um, we have, of course, the 60-piece orchestra. And sort of in the middle of that 60-piece orchestra, we'll have a folk rock group of four instruments. Now, that in itself is two different worlds that uh, are being uh, put together in a way that, that one doesn't normally find. Usually, one thinks of a rock group and an orchestra as completely different entities. But in fact, they'll be there uh, as two of the large elements. Then we have a boys uh, choir, the Pasadena Boys Choir, uh, which is another element. And of course, then you're dealing with uh, children's voices, which is something that, that is a fairly unique kind of sound. And, um, and then we have a female vocalist who will accompany the folk rock group, and also three actors who will do recitations of poetry as well. So this will be uh, a big job to coordinate, and over the next couple of weeks, I'll have quite a few hours learning this piece. Wonderful. So you also worked on the introductory video to Supreme Master Ching Hai. That's correct. And uh, so in this case, uh, it's a seven and a half minute uh, documentary highlighting her various uh, achievements and background. And so my job was to uh, compose music that reflected these various aspects of her character, trying to uh, get across the message of the documentary. Yeah, she certainly is a multifaceted person. And uh, uh, I think some of that multifaceted uh, nature will be revealed in this concert. I feel that there's a, some sort of a, a connection between uh, her visual art and her poetry in that uh, it tends to uh, have very simple, direct, sort of emotional kind of quality to it, and I think that that's, that can be found in the poetry as well. I can't think of any other event where so many different kinds of diverse musics will be together on the stage, so I think that reflects the title of One World very well. Anything that uh, goes away toward raising the public consciousness of a sense of unity is a good thing, so I think we'll make some difference. Carrie Walsh is an international soprano who has performed with notable companies such as Santa Fe Opera, the Boris Brat Festival in Canada, and Chamber Music America. She toured Europe with the International Music Program Orchestra. Her performance is regularly met with glowing reviews, including that of the Los Angeles Times, hailing her singing as dramatic and meltingly beautiful. For the One World of Peace Through Music concert, she sang Peter Boyer's musical adaptation of Supreme Master Ching Hai's poem, Love Melody 4. During an interview, she shared her thoughts about the song as follows on December 8, 1998. Well, it is uh, a song with music written by Peter Boyer, who's a young and extremely talented composer. And he has set this, uh, this wonderful poem by Supreme Master Ching Hai uh, to music that I just can't imagine how it could have been captured better. He's really done a wonderful job of capturing the, the sort of bittersweet element. It's a love song with a very sort of tender, longing element to it. And it just floats and it soars over the orchestra. So, you know, you can really feel the words in your heart. And I like to sing from my heart. And it's easy to do it when you have words and music like that. I always um, read through the poem a few times first and sort of, you know, sort of sleep on it and daydream on it and just sort of see what images it conjures up for me before I actually look at the music. So I got the poem a few weeks before I got the music itself. And then I got the music and sort of hummed through it and then put it to the words. And it all just came together just like that. It was really, really easy to fit it. And it's also very singable. It's, mm -hmm. it's a lot easier when a, when a composer writes music that, that has a, a melodic feel to it that just, well, we say it, it fits the voice. Right, you know, right. And it just sings itself. So this song really sings itself. I don't think I can take too much credit for it. <laughs> to me, 
when she talks about the seasons, uh, how many miles to spring, how many miles to winter, how many miles to paradise, how many miles to my heart. Mm. It's about the different qualities of a relationship and the different stages of life somehow. Spring being hope and newness and fall being a time of, of putting things to rest and winter mm. is longing somehow and, and emptiness, maybe remembering things. The end of the poem says, uh, Rosenheim train, bring me away from my pain. Mm. Uh, somehow wanting to forget and yet also wanting to remember at the same time. Mm -hmm. And these are the experiences that make us human. Right. To mm -hmm. somehow taste life and see the colors, the yellow flowers mm -hmm. and the blue flowers and, and experience the vibrancy of the color. That's what makes us human. Mm -hmm. And we are all spirit as well. But if we were just spirit, then we, weren't, we wouldn't be here in this physical body. So I think that uh, when we can appreciate the beauty of human emotions and to somehow see them in a way that betters us or makes us somehow pure and beautiful. And that, again, that is one of the roles of art, is okay. to take love and pain and and turn it into something beautiful in terms of how we interpret it. And she's done just that with this poem. One World of Peace through music. Tell me, what do you think of that title? I think it's really the highest goal, and it's mm -hmm. something that I'm very proud to be a part of, mm -hmm. because I see on some level that that's my role as an artist. And I am interested in uh, all different cultures and all different people and the way they think and how we can all be at peace with one another mm -hmm. and how we can communicate with one another. Right. And I think that's probably the most important thing we can all think about right now. But I look forward to seeing the documentary, which is also going to be part of mm -hmm. the program, that Peter Boyer has scored, which is a documentary about her life and uh, how uh, she learned uh, this meditation technique and tapped into her inner resources and was able to teach millions of people and, and uh, how she's shared that with people all around the world and right. is very well mm -hmm. loved, which is evident in everything that, that goes on. Absolutely, absolutely. Do you think world peace is possible? I do. Yeah. One way to, to help people come to that goal is really to, to educate them and to make them feel comfortable because a lot that goes on in the world is about fear of the unknown things of thing fear of things we don't understand and mm -hmm. ways we don't understand and people we don't understand and to to gently and lovingly communicate mm -hmm. and of course art and painting and music and theater and literature are all wonderful ways of bringing about this education and so i think that's part of the reason artists are very important I also believe that it starts on a very small level mm -hmm. and that everybody can do their part right. on a mm -hmm. tiny scale, mm -hmm. you know. Every compassionate gesture that, that somebody gives mm -hmm. can make a difference mm -hmm. because it all builds. And a person may not have the resources or the, or the energy or the knowledge or the confidence to do things like Summa Ching Hai. Uh, is doing in terms of the scope that she's working on. Mm -hmm. But everybody can make their own contribution Absolutely. in terms of making a difference. One of the notable agents in Hollywood, Stephen Cooper, was co-producer of the benefit concert One World of Peace Through Music. During his illustrious career in the entertainment industry, Stephen Cooper was the senior vice president and head of music department for 13 years in one of the largest talent agencies in the world, International Creative Management. Cooper is the producer of TV shows such as Legends of Rock and Roll for HBO, Jerry Lee Lewis and Friends for British TV, 
and was the associate producer of Great Balls of Fire, starring Dennis Quaid and Winona Ryder. He was nominated for an Ace Award as the producer of the TNT movie Max and Helene. Stephen Cooper is currently producing three musical specials for James Brown, Aretha Franklin, and The Culture Club. In an interview prior to the concert on November 28, 1998, Stephen Cooper shared with us his background and experiences as a professional in the music industry. So tell us more about your background. You have quite an extensive background. You've done the Legends of Rock and Roll. You worked with Dennis Quaid and Winona Ryder and Great Balls of Fire. So tell me more. Well, I started off in Canada in mm -hmm. uh, the mid-60s as a rock and roll promoter, dealing with the original Rolling Stones and the Beatles and people of that ilk. And then a company in New York called Creative Management at the time, which then became ICM, kind of asked me if I wanted to join them, and I decided that it would be a good idea. And I went to ICM originally as a specialist in taxes, mm -hmm. because I'm a Canadian CPA originally, mm -hmm. and represented people such as the Rolling Stones, Bob Dylan, and then evolved more into kind of what I would call middle of the road music and Tom Jones and the Paul Ankers of the world and I don't know if you know the name Charles Osnivore from France and mm -hmm. mostly in that general area and then ran a division uh, for ICM and spent time with the Beatles and unfortunately spent quite a bit of time with John Lennon I really had breakfast with him in New York with his child at that time Sean who was really a very young child. We have this picture here with you, with Ronald Reagan. Tell us about that moment. There is a theater called the Ford Theater mm -hmm. in Washington. And I was asked to produce a special in which there was just, they honored um, talent. I produced a package of, say, 10 famous artists that were given humanitarian awards. And uh, President Reagan attended. And it was broadcast on CBS. How did you get involved with the Summa Ching Hai organization? The whole idea of one world through peace mm -hmm. and through music is something that I've personally always been involved in. And since all the proceeds go to charity, I think that, uh, again, it was all for a good cause. Right. So therefore, I had no problem in dealing with it and mm -hmm. am proud that I got involved with them. I think it's just an exciting variety of talent that coming together with a 60-piece orchestra mm -hmm. will be a very exciting evening for whoever attends. And I think it will be a memorable evening. So Celine Dion was going to be involved with our, with our benefit concert, and, uh, but she had another date that she's doing. You, you worked with Celine before. Yes, I go back with uh, Celine Dion and especially her husband uh, probably for more than 30 years. I'm from Montreal and she's from Montreal, as is her husband and I knew him when he was a performer. And um, we have a very close relationship, and unfortunately, there was a realization that the, there was a conflict in her coming to this event on December 18th because she was doing something in Montreal, which is her hometown, and, and it, for cystic fibrosis, which is her charity. Do you know uh, much about Summa Ching Hai, the founder of the Summa Ching Hai International Organization? I've never met her. Mm -hmm personally, but I think that her artwork and her, her design, her clothes designs, everything that I have seen that, this, that she does, from jewelry to art to poetry, mm -hmm. is incredible. I think this woman is, is incredible, plus she devotes a lot of time to charity, right. and mm -hmm. I hope, I have no idea whether she will, but I hope that she attends, because I'd be honored to meet her. Larry Tim is the co-producer of the Benefit concert, One World of Peace Through Music. As a university professor, he teaches film music and recently published a new book called The Soul of Cinema. Dr. Tim holds two master's degrees and a doctorate in music from Yale University. He has recorded as oboe and English horn soloist in over 300 recordings with some of the premier orchestras of the region, such as the Los Angeles Philharmonic, the Long Beach Symphony, and the Pasadena Symphony. 
Dr. Tim shared his experiences of coordinating the benefit concert in the following interview on December 9, 1998. Uh, since last May, uh, and of course this being December here, um, basically I've uh, tried to help out by getting uh, kind of a, a eclectic uh, combination of different types of talent that was requested and we've been pretty successful getting some of the people, the key people we wanted, we're very happy. Uh, in fact, the film composer Bill Conti, who uh, will be conducting about anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes worth of his film and television music. Academy had, Award uh, winner and that's, Emmy that's Award right. winner Bill Conti. That's right, exactly. Yes. Well, uh, of course, other than Bill Conti, Fred Carlin, who is um, going to be doing a very special uh, presentation of, uh, I guess maybe anywhere from a half an hour to 40 minutes uh, of a symphonic portrait of uh, various songs that uh, he has composed uh, based on the poetry of Master Ching Hai, who of course uh, is a very talented person and uh, she, uh, as a poet, has written some very inspiring things. And so Fred Carlin, himself being an Academy Award winning uh, composer and uh, Emmy Award winning and Grammy Award winning composer, uh, has um, uh, agreed to write uh, this symphonic portrait, which is going to feature a 60-piece orchestra and several actors and some other surprises, such as a children's chorus and a few other things. And I've had a chance to hear the stuff he's written, and it's really going to be, I think, very, very moving for people, very powerful and very memorable. And I think it'll be one of the highlights of the night, in addition, certainly, to, to Bill Conti and the other, other things. Um, and I think Fred's piece, uh, the, the songs he's written, I think, really have the potential to themselves be separated out of this piece and perhaps even go on the pop charts, some of them. They, they actually are, are very catchy tunes. Then Gaelic Storm, the... Uh, the man uh, from Titanic. Exactly, that's right. The uh -huh. Irish man from Titanic, of course, has gotten international fame from that movie. Uh, they will also be on stage performing some of their wild Irish music. Irish music. And, they, <laughs> and um, we have uh, met and uh, worked with them uh, earlier on. And um, in addition to that, Maria Newman, who was... Uh, Another composer could do something special that night is going to be doing a, uh, her approach to a, a poetry of Ma a Master Ching Hai. And I think her approach is a little more classically oriented, more operatic. So that should be interesting to see what she comes up with. Actually, she's the daughter of the very famous uh, film composer, Alfred, Alfred Newman. Newman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she has also two very famous brothers and a very famous co male cousin. Uh, the two brothers are Thomas Newman and David Newman, both very successful film composers. And Randy Newman, her cousin, who's also mm. a very fine songwriter, entertainer, and film composer. And then Peter Boyer, uh, who's a conductor and a composer, is uh, really one of the more promising young composers in America. He has won all kinds of composing awards in the last couple of years. And he's had some of his works presented by some very prestigious groups on both coasts, East Coast and West Coast, mm -hmm. uh, at Carnegie Hall in New York City. And uh, I think this will be a very unique evening because mm -hmm. it is an eclectic mix. There's something for everybody, no matter what type of music a person likes, whether it be classical music, pop music, pop music. or ethnic music. Mm -hmm. Music is kind of the universal language, no matter what you know, nation you're in, no matter what language barrier or race barrier or religious barrier, everybody can appreciate music. And uh, music does seem, seem to bond or mesh people together uh, and unite them in a way that practically no other force can. I think actually the, the concept here is we're hoping to bring together um, people from all walks of life, from all nationalities, and some of our composers are of different descent. I mean, we certainly have people up on stage from Ireland. We have Bill Conti, whose roots are in Italy. Uh, Peter Boyer actually is also part Italian. Uh, Fred Carlin, from, I know he's from New York City. What I'm saying here, too, is that for the audiences, in some cases, since the Shrine Auditorium is a place that they do televise the Academy Awards from every other year, exactly. this will kind of give the regular people like myself a chance to feel like they're at the Academy Awards, which is normally a rather difficult uh, place to find tickets for, you know, for the, for the regular person, you know, so. A master Ching Hai. I'm very impressed with her great talent she has. I mean, mm -hmm. she is incredibly talented in practically all areas of talents that people would like to be blessed in. Um, she uh, obviously has been, been very successful as a designer of fashions, of jewelry, and from that alone, she, with her success, she's managed to get uh, a lot of uh, financial support that she can, instead of keeping the money for herself, mm -hmm. She's ex extreme humanitarian. She sees people who need uh, certainly things and uh, to be able to survive. And she has uh, actually very graciously given the monies back to the world peoples uh, and to victims of floods and tornadoes and hurricanes and earthquakes and fires and you name it. Pretty much she and the people working behind the scenes uh, in the Summa Ching Hai International Association, the way I understand it, they have really uh, been one of those 
forces uh, very quietly working behind the scenes that people don't understand and they, they graciously give of their time and their talents along with the monies that she has raised. Uh, she's also a wonderful painter and artist and there's going to be an art exhibit at 6 p.m. on Friday night, the, the 18th of right. December, that people can yeah. come out and see some of her works as well. And I understand some of her fashions will also be displayed that evening too. I'm personally looking forward to meeting her. I hope she's able to come. I know she's been invited. I don't know if she'll be able to make it or not. Um, and uh, I know there are a lot of uh, a lot of the people who have followed her uh, and what she's done. Uh, I kind of ex described her to some of my friends uh, that she's kind of uh, an example of a Mother Teresa, Mother Teresa, you know, who's uh, really been very compassionate towards people that were less fortunate. And uh, so I think it would be nice if she hopefully can make it. And uh, I think that she'll enjoy the special program as the audience will too that has been presented in brought together. So we'd like to know uh, more about your experience of the one and one piece uh, through a music concert. Well, it was a wonderful experience, of course, and it, it was a memorable night. It really was. I've met people since then who were in the audience who stopped me and said, oh, I was there that night, and we had a good time. We had a wonderful time. So more than one, one person has mentioned that to me, which uh, was always good to hear. Well, I love her poetry and, and the very little that I know of her music I, I enjoyed because I did work with, with one piece uh, and prepare it for the uh, concert, um, it would be nice to do music and poetry in one place at one time, like on a CD or in, in a concert. Uh, I think it's worthy of that. It just, um, I think the chemistry and the harmonies have to be right for something like that to come together, but it would be very exciting to, to do. At the end of the event, you dedicated a song to Supreme Master and performed it. How was that performing a piece with the um, person in the audience there with you? Well, it was special. It made it special because it, 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 was, uh, it was thought about uh, with that person in mind. And sometimes when you dedicate a piece, I know that when the person is there, you can actually do your very best to uh, do the best performance of, of that dedication. And it was exciting. So that, that evening, um, the night that you performed the piece, did it come out like you expected it? Um, I could feel the audience during the song, and that means that it was successful as close to the ideal as it possibly could be. With that audience, there had to be 6,000 people, but I know that the Shrine Auditorium seats 6,000 people, and it was more than four, when the audience and the performers become one. Mm -hmm. It is almost uh, like uh, almost nearly divine where, where this oneness can actually meet in some, not, not location place, but in some spiritual place in the middle. Mm -hmm. Not the performers performing, not the audience receiving, but all of a sudden that, that contact is made and it becomes wonderful because it is out there to be received. All you have to do is open up a little bit, and then you will be experiencing a part of that person's soul. It's just there. You're in the presence of a beautiful painting, a creation, something created by someone else. This is insight to not who they are physically, but who they are on this other plane. Right. So what makes it magic always is to hear music performed live. What are you up to? Well, I've been uh, busy. I have, uh, last week I was in Kansas City with the Kansas City Symphony. I've been with Houston Symphony for five concerts, Atlanta. I do many concerts and uh, I did last year the Thomas Crown Affair, which was a movie and I'm working on another movie for television now. I remember everyone up being on stage and all the flowers and, and, and all the wonderful people who were there experiencing the end of a, of a, a concert that went well and uh, was received well because it seemed like one of those concerts that uh, was so special because everything just went the way it was supposed to and there was so much love and, and affection from everyone around, from the audience to everyone working backstage that it was memorable.
it makes those memorable. I think it went very well. But every once in a while, there's one that stands out. And of course, that one stood out above uh, many others. Would you want to share with us once again how you came up with that poetic sound for um, I Will Forever Love You? Well, it's, it's all the studying of music to yeah. be able to know how to do that. I hope that I adequately put that longing into the music so that everyone in the audience could feel that same thing. Yeah. What I felt. Right. It's, it's uh, uh, all sparked from the words in the music, mm -hmm. and you, you, you retain that and try to do your best to pass that message on to other people. And I can express it in music, and, and then you hopefully will feel the same thing, the same way with, that, with the song that was written. All those things that she felt mm -hmm. when she wrote that come out to everyone. If I could meet or have the pleasure to be with Summa Ching Hai, I would tell her how the experience that I had was so wonderful. And, and what she's giving to other people is so wonderful that I would have to ask her to take care of herself, to wish her health and, and, and happiness I know that she has, but to, to take care that she can continue doing the good work that she's been doing and to expose herself to as many people as need her exposure. And uh, in her travels to just fly safe and be very careful and helpful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Conti, for being with us. So let's talk about the extraordinary benefit concert, One World of Peace Through Music. How did the Peace Seeker come about? When I got the second notebook of poems, the poem that leaped out at me was uh, a, a longer work called Silent Tears. And in that work, if, you, if you'll if you forgive me for doing this, I really, because we're talking about her poetry and it's, it's so wonderful and also it had such a bearing on the, on the concert and on, on, the, uh, on my piece, just to read a few lines from, from uh, the, one of the poems within Silent Tears. Um, this is the first thing you hear in my piece. You hear um, an, an actor come on stage and he says, once upon a time, a true peace lover wandered around the many worlds in search of eternal happiness. She walked over the face of the earth, the suns, the moons, and the clouds. At last she found that it was all the while hidden in her very heart. And I thought right away, oh, well, this is wonderful because th th there's a major theme here. You know, what we're all looking for is right there inside us. And, and then I realized many of her poems talked in very strong metaphorical language about a person trying to reach their inner self. Right. So basically, when you received all the poetry, you went through it and you chose the ones that you felt that you wanted to work with, that, that brought across the message. That yes, you to I had to figure out what a message would be right. that would be consistent with her philosophy and mine. It was uh, about eight months, mm -hmm. and it was um, the most difficult time was the first two months working out the, the script, the libretto, as it were. Mm -hmm. and writing it and orchestrating it. It was wonderful. I loved it. It got me very deeply into my music. And since I do so many different things, it was particularly exciting for me to be able to stretch out and spend that kind of time on something that was so art-oriented and, and, and so message-oriented. Right. What are your thoughts on Supreme Master Ching Hai now that you have performed this piece and knowing her music and poetry? Well, I find her an extraordinary person. She, uh, the kind of time and love that she gives uh, for all of her humanitarian efforts and her artistic efforts uh, is, is really remarkable and un unusual. There are not that many people um, have that combination of, of instincts and impulses that she does. And uh, the poems continued to get deeper as I worked with them. They, they not only remained deep, but they continued to get more multidimensional. I just found myself uh, feeling privileged to be able to work with her through these poems. I didn't get to collaborate with her, but I felt like it was a true collaboration. Are you satisfied with the piece seeker and how it came out? Yes, very much so. Of course, you always want to do the next piece. And mm -hmm. I, you know, what it, what it did for me was to make me realize that this kind of work must be a part of my life from now on, because it, it, um, it's, a, it's a way that I can give just as when I teach and write my books, I feel like I'm really contributing to
to uh, the lives of other people. And of course, music can do that too. Look how, look how we all respond to Beethoven's Ninth so many decades later. What's it like at the moment when the audience is applauded and finished the piece? What's that like? Well, it is very exciting. But you know, after, after a 40 minute performance, mm -hmm. There are so many other emotions that, that flood through you. I had a lot of pride for all, all the people who performed with me. I just thought they all did so well. And um, that's a heavy emotion. I mean, I felt a lot. You know? And then, um, you know, Supreme Master was there, and uh, that was, as I say, an honor. And um, I could see her from where we were, and it seemed like she was enjoying this. She was bouncing up and down during, during the, the heavy rock piece. And that pleased me a lot because, after all, uh, she was uh, she wrote the poems, and um, you know when you and was a collaborator, even though we weren't working together. And so you obviously you want you want the, that person to be happy too. And it seemed like she was. So all these things were uh, were going on at the same time. How it was you, very nice. Yeah. How do you feel about Supreme Master's poetry? I think she's very good, mm -hmm. and these these poems all seem to be written in the. Uh, early to mid 70s as near as I could guess but that may not be so I, I never saw any dates on any of them or very few of them there were a few that has those dates and so um, if that's so I don't know what she would write now but I know it would be different because whatever it is because they were very personal and a lot of them the, these uh, poems that I described that discuss the internal struggle and how difficult it is to come to one with the, with the supreme being above who's created everything and, and with the supreme being inside each of us, uh, that must have been a personal trial that she was going through at that time. These are very emotional and very personal poems and very fine for that reason. So I'm interested in seeing what she would do now because the subject would be different. She's passed through those tests and I think they'd be equally fascinating. They'd be, be different. I'd like to, to, to thank her for um, everything involved with the concert and, and her work, uh, her worldwide work, which um, is ongoing and which does so much for so many people. Uh, as I just said, I think that, that she's unique and remarkable and has so much to give, which she is giving. Some people have a lot to give and they don't. Mm -hmm. uh, and others try, but they don't have a lot to give. And that's very admirable. But she has both, and that's, that's very unique. And, uh, and the fact that she is able to do that is a great gift to me and to everybody. I'm grateful. So you want to go to a real party? With that coy invitation from Jack, Leonardo DiCaprio's character in the blockbuster hit Titanic, movie audiences worldwide were introduced to Gaelic Storm, the steerage band entertaining in full Irish flair the passengers of the Titanic. In addition, Gaelic Storm's music is used for the HBO special, The Making of Titanic. The band has appeared numerous times on national TV. Represented by Virgin EMI Records, the release of their self-titled first album charted high on Billboard's World Music Chart at number five. During the post-reception party of One World of Peace Through Music, the manager and band member of Gaelic Storm, Stephen Waymeyer, and his wife, Carrie Noonan, had an especially enjoyable conversation with Supreme Master Ching Hai. Soon after the concert, Supreme Master invited both of them to dinner. They presented Supreme Master with a Gaelic Storm CD and a t-shirt as a token of friendship. In return, Supreme Master Ching Hai gave the newly wedded couple each an SM Celestial Ring, designed by herself. How did Gaelic Storm come about? Wow, well, um Several of us from all parts of the world, uh, one member from Ireland, one from London, England, one from Coventry, England, myself from New York, and uh, another woman from, uh, from Zambia, Africa, actually found our way to Los Angeles for various reasons, and we all washed up on the shores of Santa Monica and uh, soon met one another in various 
places around LA. Uh, most of us met in a little pub called O'Brien's down on the, on the beach in Santa Monica, and we discovered a mutual love for Irish music, and uh, basically uh, had no intentions initially of uh, becoming a professional musical group. We were just friends who got together every now and again, and started playing down on the, on the beach in Santa Monica, and uh, not long after that, we were noticed by a casting director who, uh, who booked us as the steerage band in the movie Titanic. That was like your first big break. That was our big break, yeah. We, we got together in March of 1996, and we were uh, hired to do Titanic in June of 96. So it happened like lightning. Did you know that Titanic was going to be such a monster hit? We didn't have the first idea of how big it was going to be. Now, we knew, having heard that James Cameron was directing, we knew, OK, this is going to be big. We'd seen Terminator and Aliens and some of his other uh, his other efforts, so we knew that uh, we knew that there was going to be uh, it was going to be a pretty big, big production, at least initially. But we had no idea that it was going to capture the hearts of so many people. So, what was it like working with Oscar-winning director James Cameron? He was very relaxed on set, a really wonderful man, and it was uh, it was really inspiring uh, for the time that we were down there, being in the presence of somebody with that kind of artistic integrity who believed so strongly in this piece of art that he was creating and was willing to get behind it 110 percent and give it every effort that a human being could possibly give and it was it was really a magical experience so what what's happened since then since Titanic? wow we released the album during the summer so we finished the album about the same time that the uh, the movie came out and then signed to a record label called higher octave records which is located up in malibu and released our album in the summer of 98. And we've been on tour pretty much continuously ever since. We've uh, been all over the world. We've really had quite an adventure since, uh, since Titanic. So you were part of the magical event, One World of Peace through Absolutely. music. So tell us your experience. That there. was one of our proudest moments, I think. Um, again, remember, we'd only, we'd only really been, uh, been together for a short time. And we'd only been touring for about a year when that came about and actually less than a year. And there we were being asked to perform at the Shrine Auditorium, which for anybody living in Los Angeles or anybody who has seen the Grammys or the Oscars on TV, the Shrine Auditorium is the place. And there we were finding ourselves on uh, December 18th, plunked right down on stage at the Shrine Auditorium. And not only was it this wonderful environment in which to play, but it was an incredible event in its own right. I think it was all that much more exciting to be involved with a charity event of, of that magnitude. And it was really about doing something, something really, really good. And I, I think it was, it was wonderful to be, to be involved. And again, to share the stage with uh, musicians and composers of the caliber, Beach Boys, Bill Conti, it was, it was magical. And then, of course, to meet Supreme Master Ching Hai was just the icing on the cake. That was, that was just wonderful. How did you feel about Supreme Master's music and poetry put to music oh, it by was, these great It great was writers. remarkable. Um, it, it was something that we, you know, our involvement with, um, with the event was really, initially, we were focused on our little contribution to this evening of uh, this one world of peace through music. And I, we, had a vague idea of everything else that was going to be happening, but uh, really hadn't been involved with that until the actual night. So there we were backstage listening to this incredible music unfold, getting, to, getting a chance to hear Supreme Master's poetry was just was remarkable. And it was, uh, again, I think it, w it was really striking to us to be involved with someone who had that same kind of artistic integrity that I mentioned when I mentioned James Cameron, but also had this deep, very powerful message and was able to get behind it artistically as well. So it was a beautiful presentation of a really beautiful sentiment and really beautiful ideas. And it was great to be involved with something like that. Participating in an event like One World of Peace through music um, kind of opened, opened our eyes to the possibilities that music has as a universal language. Um, I think it's something that we all, we all believed in personally, because certainly it's, it's something that brought us together from the four corners of the globe and gave us a common language that we could, we could work with just as a, 
as a band, um, but being able to be involved in an event like that where you really start to think about music as this force for change right. and a force for peace, yeah. something that can bring people together and unite them, unite them as a common force for good. And you actually got a chance to meet Supreme Master at the VIP reception. I did, what was I that did. like? That was, that was really <laughs> wonderful. Uh, my wife and I were, were just honored to, uh, to have been invited, first of all. And we walked around and we looked at Supreme Master's uh, other artistic endeavors, her painting, her jewelry, clothing designs. And uh, we had no idea we were going to be introduced to her. But it was, it was very touching to be, able to, uh, to be able to meet her in person. And uh, she was wonderful. She was very, very open and very friendly and very gracious. And uh, you know, we had seen her be escorted in to, uh, to the theater and had no idea that we'd actually be able to meet someone like this face to face. But it was, uh, it was, a, it was a wonderful moment. And then I think you were invited to a dinner. We did. That was, right. uh, was, that like? that was really special. We, uh, we got a chance to, to meet her one-on-one, -on -one, Carrie and I did. And, uh, and that, was, that was just magical because um, we thought of her as someone who we might meet in passing or have a chance to, uh, to say thank you to on stage. But to be able to sit down and eat with her and listen to her stories. I mean, a woman who has the courage of her convictions and has had so much life experience and can really talk about her experiences in such a dramatic and, and such a touching way. It's, uh, it's great to be able to spend time with someone like that. Here we were able to sit back and actually listen to someone who could tell stories that were well beyond our experience at the time and, uh, and really share them in a way that, uh, that really, I think, touched us as an audience. It was, it was wonderful. So I think she shared what? Her, her secret for Vietnamese coffee? Yes, she did tell me how to make Vietnamese coffee, which has become a passion of mine ever since then. And I am, I am grateful. I'm grateful to Supreme Master Ching Hai for a great many things, but especially for the coffee. And I see that you're wearing the beautiful ring. Oh, yeah. Let me um, see. This was uh, one of her designs, which she graciously and so sweetly gave to me, which was, uh, it was really wonderful. And it's a, it's a touching reminder of, of the time that we had a chance to share with her. In addition to being a musician, I'm also a, a grad student at UCLA in the uh, Folklore and Mythology program. And uh, my, my area of interest is uh, religious belief and the way human beings of varying cultures deal with the religious impulse. And the impulse to try to touch something greater than human experience is, is universal and it's as basic as breath. So. And that was another reason that uh, our opportunity to meet and talk with Supreme Master Ching Hai was so exciting, because here I had the opportunity to speak to a Inline world master. religious <laughs> leader. Yes. But what was, I think, amazing was, for me at any rate, was the depth of her humanity. The fact that this is not someone who is trying to be removed from human experience. This is not someone who's trying to be distant and separate. We sat down and we talked about coffee, <laughs> and you know we were able to share a meal together, and uh, it was it was wonderful approaching her on that level, and you know getting a chance to speak to a fellow artist, someone who who could talk about songwriting and talk about composing and talk about coffee and basic human experiences and emotions. That was wow. such an honor to be included in something like that, but uh, to be able to take what we did intimately just as a circle of friends and bring that to the stage. So I think live performance, if I had to, if I had to pick one aspect of this that I like the best, I would say it's the live performances. I think that the thing that, that really struck us was how, how diverse the art that was being expressed on stage was. From Supreme Master's poetry to the movie scores that we heard to the Beach Boys presentation, that was, a, that was a real dream for me. The first concert I'd ever been to as a kid was a Beach Boys concert. I grew up in a very small town in uh, Buffalo, New York, and big bands never came to this little town near Buffalo that I lived in. And the Beach Boys came to our, our little park and did a show there one summer, and that was the first concert I ever attended. And I was blown away, and so here I was, years later on the same stage with, uh, with some of the members of the original Beach Boys. It was, that was magical.
everybody came together and we were able to focus our artistic presentations on a common goal and help make the world a little brighter for some children who were who were suffering and I think that's that's something really it was it was wonderful to get behind that it was an honor to be included in that project and I think it reminds us of just how much good you can do with with music and and with this kind of performing art and then at the same time I think it would be it would be wrong not to focus on the evening as an evening of entertainment as well I mean I think that as much as anything else yes it was a fundraising event but it was also a time for everybody performers and audience to just enjoy this experience sit back and listen to the music so do you have any message that you want to share with Supreme Master or well I just want to say you are fondly remembered certainly by myself and my wife and also by the rest of the band and uh, Thank you for the work that you're doing. I think it's a, it's a wonderful thing. Stephen, thank you so much for being oh, here. Thank you for having me. It's great to see you again. Mr. Gary Good is the president of Gary Good Entertainment. He works with celebrities and notable people, including singers Cheryl Crow, Naomi Judd, Natalie Cole, as well as actresses Debbie Reynolds, Linda Evans, Suzanne Summers, and many others. For the One World of Peace Through Music Benefit Concert, Mr. Good played the agent's role in securing the hostess for this grand evening, the multi-talented Debbie Reynolds, who has starred in numerous memorable films, including Singing in the Rain, The Unsinkable Molly Brown, Mother, among many others. When Debbie Reynolds arrived and realized what was actually going on, because uh, I don't think she had an idea of uh, the magnitude of what was being put together. And saw the orchestration, all the musicians and, and the people that have collaborated on this event, she was extremely impressed. And I think she thoroughly enjoyed being part of it. Debbie and I were together again uh, recently for another uh, engagement, and she brought it up again about the experience that, that she had with, with uh, the one world, and uh, still remembers it, and it's very significant in her mind, too. I was very amazed to see so many musicians, so much uh, time had been put into the arrangements and the, the music, uh, writing music to go with the words, and, uh, and then uh, when you put them together, it was just spectacular. I thought it was beautiful. The, the whole setting was, was just breathtaking. I've never seen so many flowers in my life, by the way. I know that one of the clients that I work with, who is a, a comedian, and he opened for Frank Sinatra for about the last 13 years of his career, uh, Tom Greeson was in attendance. He was in the audience and uh, enjoyed the show very much. We moved into the area where the art work was. It's was great. Of course, when you have that kind of uh, workmanship, artwork, creative decor in itself was, was the art and uh, but the whole area was really was really impressive it's such a variety I walked through the area where the jewelry was and uh, I stayed there for quite a while looking at various uh, designs on the jewelry and uh, then I would go further down and, and the designing of the clothes just fabulous I, it's, it's hard to, to really describe with that showing it, but um, to see one person that, that has that much creativity and, and uh, time to put it together, I don't know where she finds the time. I was just very impressed with the paintings. I had the opportunity to meet the Supreme Master, and uh, she was so gracious and so personable, and you could just feel the compassion there. And you could tell that she was not putting on any kind of act, that that was who she was. There were so many people that, that were around, and uh, one thing that, that I noticed was that when she was talking with me, she was talking to me and was not distracted. And um, she was very, very humble uh, to have 
accomplished all that she's accomplished. And uh, that's one of the things that I really noticed is that, that she was not caught up in the glamour of being such a creative uh, person with so many, influencing so many people, that she was just very, very, um, interpretation I got was ordinary person. You can see what uh, she has accomplished in the things that she does, and I would certainly like to learn more, but uh, from what I, I was able to see at the time, you don't go into a situation like that and feel what we felt without a very, very strong, compassionate leader, someone who is, is um, creating this, this, this feel among the, amongst the people who are involved. When people come in, into a situation, it's, it's uh, God sent. So why I got involved, I think, was not uh, my chance. I think it, it, it happened because uh, it was meant to be. I'm really grateful. This CD is, uh, is full of the most wonderful collaboration of uh, Supreme Master's words and the, uh, the arrangement and the composition musically of, of the people that are on here. I, I wish everybody had a chance to hear this, to experience this, uh, this wonderful project. Uh, not often do you see this kind of um, talent put together on a project. And the lyrics that were written, the poems, uh, is very, very beautiful and significant. The words uh, of poetry um, just say, uh, seem to be, there, there's a special inspiration that you can feel. I think that with the world being so full of negative, and unfortunately the, the entertainment industry in general has so many forces working that, that are not positive and not nurturing to people, that if a spiritual leader can, can express themselves in a way that, that reaches people who may not be paying attention to the spiritual part, you know, they're, they're maybe not interested at the time in, in hearing about um, growing spiritually, but if they could hear a song that within that song there's, there's goodness and, and kindness and, and positive feelings, and within the, the, uh, the poetry if there's, the, there's, there's uplifting things, I think that's a, a great way to, to bridge into different uh, people who will be touched. So I think it's, I think it's really great that uh, Supreme Master has is, uh, those kind of uh, artistic treatments, expressions. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, the world's premier center for treating and researching terminal childhood diseases, was one of two fortunate recipients of Supreme Master Ching Hai's generosity at the One World of Peace Through Music concert. A few months after the event ended, the National Executive Director of St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, Richard Shadia, personally wrote a letter to invite Supreme Master Ching Hai to attend their 19th annual Hollywood Gala, held on March 4th, 1999, at the exclusive Beverly Hilton Hotel in Beverly Hills. Much supported by celebrities and prominent figures across the nation, these Hollywood galas are held for the noble cause to help in the research to cure fatal childhood illnesses. Both Mr. Shadiak and the Vice President of St. Jude, Jerry Chipman, were excited and looking forward to the opportunity to meet Supreme Master to convey their gratitude. St. Jude also printed Supreme Master Ching Hai's picture in the angel section of their souvenir book. At 7.30 p.m., Supreme Master Ching Hai made her entrance. Richard Shadiak came to greet Supreme Master Ching Hai and escort her to the VIP room.
For entertainment, comedian Dennis Miller stirred the room with laughter, and legendary singer James Taylor performed all of his greatest hits through the years. Among the VIPs who greeted Supreme Master included former famed television talk show host Phil Donahue, dinner co-chairs and the three children of St. Jude's founder, legendary actor Danny Thomas, Tony, Terry, and Marlo Thomas, Hollywood film director and producer Tom Shadier, whose credits include movies such as Patch Adams, The Nutty Professor, Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, and Liar Liar. Judge Roy Paul, New York attorney Albert Leon and his companion, event coordinator Linda Levine, film director and producer Georges Champchun, Dr. Ching Hong Kui, one of the leading medical researchers in the nation, Maxine Moshe, executive director of the Amy Karen Cancer Fund for Children. And actor Steven Seagal, the star of such hit movies as Under Siege, Executive Decision, and Above the Law, and his companion, Arissa Wolf. Steven Seagal was particularly surprised and impressed upon learning of Supreme Master Ching Hai's artistic talents. Out of spontaneity, Supreme Master gave Mr. Seagal and Ms. Wolf each an SM Celestial ring that she had designed herself. Amazingly, the rings fit them perfectly. Hollywood producer and director Tom Shadiak had a long conversation with Supreme Master about meditation and its benefits. His wife, Jennifer Shadiak, expressed that meeting Supreme Master was the best gift for her that evening. Supreme Master Ching Hai moved the hearts of those who attended the gala that night, and above all, left a lasting mark of love for the children in need of hope. The next year, St. Jude invited Supreme Master Ching Hai to their 20th annual Hollywood Gala. Unfortunately, Supreme Master was unable to attend due to an upcoming lecture tour. She sent her love to St. Jude and wished them much success in their continuing efforts to help the children. The celebrities and VIPs who met her the previous year sent their warmest regards and good wishes to Supreme Master Ching Hai as follows. To the Supreme Master, I missed you this year. We had a wonderful time last year, and I loved your album. I hope you got my note, because I found it inspirational, not only for the music, but for the message it conveyed to the soul. And I pray next year you'll be with us. Thank you. God bless you. She is so filled with love. And all of you, you do such a beautiful job. God bless you. I do the same thing as the Supreme Master does. We bring peace and joy to the children of the world. Hello, Master. From the beautiful part of our country, California, I say that it's a year since I saw you last. I trust you are well. And I assure you, I am surrounded by so many of your devotees here in Hollywood. Happy New Year to you. Supreme Master, how are you? I want to show you I've learned to meditate. Watch. I haven't learned to do it for very long yet, but uh, I'm working on it. I miss you. I wish you were here, and uh, God bless. Hello to the Supreme Master, and we really miss you this year, and hope you'll join us next year. Hope your tour is really well, and all good things with you, and thank you so much for thinking about me and sending me your card last year, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. I just want to say hello. I'm sorry you're not here, but I'm sure you're carrying on your mission. 
helping a lot of people in your very special way. So we miss seeing you this year, and we hope to see you next year. God bless. My best to Supreme Master, and tell her that I think of her very fondly and, and remember with, uh, with a lot of joy my experience on stage with her that night, accepting the check for the children of St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. It was a wonderful experience, and, uh, and I, I certainly hope I'll have an opportunity to meet with her again very soon. Please, please let her know that we're, she's in our thoughts and prayers. Hi, Supreme Master. It's Tom. I don't know if you remember, but last year uh, I was here, and we miss you. Greetings to you, Supreme Master, from Shoshana Grammar, from the Regional Office of LSAC St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. We met last December when you were so generous to give us your support to the hospital. We missed you this year. We were looking forward to seeing you here at the Hollywood Gala, and I know that you have other pressing business and couldn't be here. But we want you to know that you're in our thoughts and in our prayers. And, and we appreciate all you do so very, very much. We think that, uh, that from your heart you've given so much to the children and you've created a lot of miracles for the children with your generosity and with your good thoughts and prayers going their way. We're very, very appreciative of what you've done for us in the past and we look forward to you having a long life and you sharing your long life with the children of St. Jude to give them a long life as well. We wish you all the best, and we look forward to seeing you next year. We watch the TV show. Her essence um, of the Supreme Master is, is really pure, and, and her heart comes out in, in an international language, and we get the, the good feelings and the calmness and the love and, and her inspiration to us and um, somehow she's got a universal language, so we, we love it, we enjoy it, and even my seven and three-year-old love watching it with us. So, uh, so we, we're bringing them up with, uh, with listening to the Supreme Master, and even they'll click around and s instead of watching their cartoons, say, the Supreme Master, and we all watch it. So um, she's, she's really uh, come into our lives and into our hearts, and, um, and uh, we, we uh, are better people because of it. Starlight Children's Foundation, the second beneficiary of Supreme Master Ching Hai's generosity at the One World of Peace Through Music concert, is founded by actress Emma Sams and producer Peter Samuelson 15 years ago for the purpose of brightening the lives of seriously ill children through entertainment and wish-granting programs. The foundation held its 15th anniversary gala, The Magic of Starlight, on October 28, 1999, at the Regent Beverly Wilshire Hotel in Beverly Hills. Ms. Lori Goldman, the executive director of Starlight Children's Foundation, personally wrote a letter inviting Supreme Master Ching Hai to attend the gala. An official invitation was also sent to Supreme Master from dinner co-chairs, Oscar-winning actress Kim Basinger, and CBS executive Les Moonves. As a token of gratitude, Starlight Children's Foundation had reserved a full page in their annual gala book to print the picture of Supreme Master's contribution to Starlight during the concert One World of Peace through music. Although extremely busy with another world lecture tour, Supreme Master Ching Hai was touched by Miss Goldman's sincerity and reserved some time to attend Starlight's gala. The president of Starlight Children's Foundation, Mark Cohen, greeted Supreme Master Ching Hai with a beautiful bouquet of flowers. Supreme Master Ching Hai was then accommodated with a seat especially reserved for her at the head table. The program opened with Mistress of Ceremonies, Swoozy Kurtz, followed by Mark Cohen's speech, in which he expressed his sincere thanks to Supreme Master Ching Hai for her kindness to the children. The entertainment included performances by multi-Grammy winner Cheryl Crow 
and award-winning singer and actor Davis Gaines, well known for his performances as the title role in Andrew Lloyd Webber's The Phantom of the Opera more than 2,000 times. Among those who had the opportunity to meet Supreme Master Ching Hai included famous producer, director, and actor Martin Sheen, who has starred in over 73 films such as Apocalypse Now, Badlands, and The American President. He is currently starring in the popular Emmy award-winning television series The West Wing, which has also earned him an Emmy Award for Best Dramatic Actor. Martin Sheen and his wife Janet Sheen both expressed their enjoyment to meet this charming and great spiritual master. Emmy and Tony award-winning actress Susie Kurtz, who has acted in Reality Bites, Liar Liar, and Dangerous Liaisons, was overwhelmed with appreciation for Supreme Master's generosity. Upon hearing of Swoozie's admiration for her unique gloves, Supreme Master had graciously given her the beautiful pair of gloves as a souvenir. John Mishita, the celebrity board member of Starlight Children's Foundation, was thrilled to see Supreme Master Ching Hai again, since the last time he had hosted the Benefit Concert in 1998 in her honor. Mitchell Edwards and Pericles Rellis of Edwards and Rellis Jewelers were captivated by the extraordinary jewelry that Supreme Master Ching Hai had designed and wore on this evening, declaring them as ingenious works of art. Others who had the opportunity to meet Supreme Master Ching Hai included Julie Warner, star of the CBS series Family Law, Stephen Webster, the director of public relations for Fox Sports Network, and Catherine Cohen, board member of Starlight Children's Foundation. Prior to leaving, Supreme Master Ching Hai visited three terminally ill Starlight children and lovingly gave each one a gift bag consisting of a teddy bear, and a lucky red envelope. The children and their mothers were immensely touched by Supreme Master's kind heart and her amazing attention to such details for the children. After the gala, Starlight Children's Foundation engraved Supreme Master Ching Hai's name onto a fun center as a token of appreciation for her dedication to the children. The unit was placed in one of the largest and most reputable children's hospital, the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. This fun center is one of the entertainment programs that Starlight provides to help the children through their difficult time during medical treatment. Everyone from the hospital personnel to Starlight staff members to the children were grateful to be the beneficiary of Supreme Master Ching Hai's kindness. They expressed their thoughts as follows. I would just, on behalf of the Starlight Children's Foundation and Children's Hospital of Los Angeles, like to thank Supreme Master Ching Hai and for donating, among other things, this fun center. Um, also, many of the uh, Many of the things the Supreme Master has done for Starlight, we've granted a lot of wishes, we've done children's activity network events, we've granted hospital wishes, um, we've done a lot with the generosity of the Supreme Master. We appreciate that and look forward to her continued support so that we can put more of these units, grant more wishes, and help put smiles on the faces of children who aren't feeling that great. It's really nice to receive these, and as you know, we have many kids that are here. So it's always great to have something as wonderful or, as these activity centers, because many times the kids aren't allowed to leave the floor, leave their room, and it gives them something to do while they're getting their therapies. And so we want to thank you so much, because it really is appreciated by all of our families and our children and the nurses. My name is Mary Orue and I'm a child life specialist here in the Ecology Hematology Unit. We're very excited about having the Fun Center. It helps a lot of the children who are not able to come to the playroom due to isolation and having the Fun Center gives them an opportunity to do some play in, in their bedside. I got admitted today for, for um, chemo. 
Where, where is it? It's in my blood. It's in the blood? Hi, Supreme Master. Thank you, Supreme Master, for the uh, fun center. During Supreme Master Ching Hai's short stay in California, following the Starlight Children's Foundation Gala, Janet Sheen traveled to Orange County and the Los Angeles Center to visit Supreme Master Ching Hai. The Sheens are a notable Hollywood family. Alongside Martin Sheen, his two sons, Emilio Estevez and Charlie Sheen, are also well recognized in many popular movies. Emilio Estevez has starred in Young Guns, The Mighty Ducks, and Another Steakhouse. And Charlie Sheen is known for his roles in Platoon, Young Guns, Navy Seals, and is currently acting as the main role of the popular Spin City. The celebrity couple invited Supreme Master to their home in Malibu. Together with their son, Charlie Sheen, the family greeted their special guest with genial hospitality. They had lunch together out on the breezy veranda and conversed on many enjoyable and entertaining subjects. Before the departure, Martin and Janet Sheen presented Supreme Master with two gifts as a token of their friendship. One was a pair of snow boots as a symbol of their admiration for her incredible journey to the Himalayas. And the other was a white Chinese style shirt, which was one of the costumes that was used in the shooting of the famous motion picture, Apocalypse Now. Janet Sheen slipped the shirt on Supreme Master and was delighted that the shirt fit quite well. After warm hugs and souvenir pictures were taken, the Sheens bid farewell to Supreme Master Ching Hai and wished her a safe trip back. Supreme Master Ching Hai was invited to Beverly Hills on March 21st, 1999 to attend yet another star-studded event, the Oscar Gala Night of a Hundred Stars, held at the Beverly Hills Hotel. The invitation to Supreme Master Ching Hai was warmly extended by Edvard Kopi, the ambassador of Lomar, and the president of 21st Century Entertainment. Mr. Okopian was one of the VIP guests at the One World of Peace Through Music concert. And upon witnessing the magnificence of the event and the scope of Supreme Master Ching Hai's kindness, he was enthusiastic to invite Supreme Master Ching Hai to grace the evening. This eighth annual event was attended by over 150 Hollywood stars, including past Oscar winners and nominees, to show tribute to the Academy Awards and to support Martin Scorsese's The Film Preservation Foundation, which is committed to preserving the nation's treasury of past motion pictures. The board members of the Film Preservation Foundation include well-respected and prestigious actors and directors Steven Spielberg, Clint Eastwood, Woody Allen, Francis Ford Coppola, Stanley Kubrick, George Lucas, Robert Redford, and Sidney Poppe. Upon Supreme Master Ching Hai's arrival, Edvard Akopian stepped forward to greet Supreme Master Ching Hai. He introduced his special and lovely guest to his wife Diane and to attorney Vladimir Kitire. Yes, hi, welcome. Yes, beautiful. Thank you, thank you very much. So are you? How are you doing today? Oh, I'm fine. I'm doing great. You're a humanitarian. You are. Tell us a little bit about this evening and how you feel and your whole life, actually. <laughs> well, I just know these gentlemen and the lady. And who are they? And they are the greatest Russians. Friends. Oh, France, Russian. Arist aristocrats. <laughs> oh my God, I better align myself with them. Huh? No, actually, never mind. We are aristocrats. 
<laughs> yes, we sure are. I, I'm glad to be here. I, I also don't know much about Thai society stuff. So it's the first time I'm so honored, you know? Yes. Here are the Oscars in America. I went. These are the Oscars. I'm a great fan of movies. Yes. <laughs> Any just, favorite tonight? Uh, I've just seen one yesterday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've just seen uh, maybe once every week. Yeah. <laughs> They are all my favorites. It's terrible. <laughs> I'm fanatic about movies. <laughs> I, think so are, am I. I think they are great. Without, without them, uh, our life would be so boring, right? Oh, I agree. Is she cute or what? Thank yes. you. I appreciate it. Have a great evening, Sabrina. Thank you. You too. <laughs> you too. Bye. See you, Cookie. Bye. Edvard also introduced Supreme Master to Mutar, an international celebrity shown on Guinness Records TV for his amazing physical flexibility. On the way into the Crystal Ballroom, the producer of the event, Norby Walters, introduced himself to Supreme Master Ching Hai. In the dinner room, one of the first stars to meet with Supreme Master was Stella Stevens, the famous actress known for her roles in the Poseidon Adventures with Gene Hackman, Girls, Girls, Girls with Elvis Presley, and many more. Thank you so much. I love your outfit too. And, uh, oh, I do want to see more. Yeah. Very simple. Yes, very simple. Very nice. traditional. Very <laughs> classical. Uh, in front of all the uh, big movies, now, I have to be simple. Well, uh, simplicity is the essence of style. Buzz Aldrin, one of the first astronauts to set foot on the moon, and his charming wife, Lois, also presented themselves to Supreme Master Ching Hai. Throughout the evening, celebrities made special visits to Supreme Master Ching Hai's table to meet her, including actor Henry Silva from Dick Tracy and Above the Law. This is a Supreme Master. You're so nice. I know you too. Nice. All my favorites tonight, my God. <laughs> Actor Kevin McCarthy from Death of a Salesman, Inner Space, and Steel Big, Steel Little. Actor Mark Hamill from Star Wars, Return of the Jedi, and The Empire Strikes Back. Actor Robert Davey from James Bond, License to Kill, Die Hard, and Profiler. Oscar-nominated actor Tony Curtis, who starred with Marilyn Monroe in Some Like It Hot, and Sidney Poitier in The Defiant Ones. Actor David Carradine from Kung Fu and The Long Riders. Oscar winner and multi-nominee Rod Steiger, who starred in The Pawnbroker and In the Heat of the Night, and has worked with such legends as Marlon Brando and Humphrey Bogart. Legendary actress and director of the Silver Screen and multi-Oscar nominee, Diane Ladd, who won an Academy Award nomination for her role in Rambling Rose with daughter and star of Jurassic Park, Laura Dern. Famed singer and actress, Connie Stevens, who has performed for many U.S. presidents at the White House and sang on tour with Bob Hope during the Vietnam War. Vincent Schiavelli from Ghost, Batman Returns, and James Bond, Tomorrow Never Dies. Dan Sefton, Hollywood screenwriter and columnist for the Toluccan Times, singer and actress Baby Doll. Ken Huffmaker from Entertainment Sports Television. Peter Nygaard, international fashion designer and sponsor of the Oscar Gala. And Oscar-nominated actress Karen Black from The Great Gatsby and Five Easy Pieces. Maybe uh, 
to uh, probably answer some spiritual questions from your people. So what do you mean by spiritual? Well, he knows better. He asked me. В общем-то, Supreme Master помогает людям, совсем, ну, бедным людям, бездомным. Она помогает финансовым, как говорится, отношениям и прямом отношении, как человек объясняет, что надо жить мирно, в любви, не курить, не пить. В общем-то, вот ее девиз в таком плане. Вот она хочет сказать, что мир единый, люди единые. И что давайте быть как братья и сестры. Вот ее девиз. Спасибо. Если у вас вопросы, мне, пожалуйста. Uh, you, спасибо большое. Я сейчас у нее спрошу, это какая-то религиозная группа или нет? No. Is this some kind of religious group or it's just spiritual? Um, we just, um, I, I don't know really how you call it. Names are just uh, man-made. <laughs> we actually, uh, go inside and contact us. The soul? The, the kingdom of God and the soul within us. Very simple. And no matter what kind of religion we follow, uh, in our group we have all kind of religious followers, like Catholic, Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist. Uh, it doesn't matter to us as long as uh, we <coughs> found the peace inside and we found the kingdom of God and uh, we live peacefully with our, our brothers and sisters, and that's all is important. Yeah. We also have to help our brothers and sisters too. Uh, thank you very much. I was, I'm going to ask, are you going to visit some uh, foster houses or uh, orphanage? Are you going to visit them too? Uh, yes, yes, ma'am, yes. We intend, um, they are inviting me to do that too. And uh, of course, if I have the opportunity, uh, it would be my privilege. And if we uh, can help in any way, we will try our best. As spiritual, spiritual as well as uh, material. We do both. I'm going to say thank you for your big car. And Thank you too. And welcome God bless to you. welcome to Russia. Russia needs people like you right God now. God bless you. God bless your country. Thank you. Thank you very much. The following year. On Sunday, March 26, 2000, Hollywood's most celebrated annual event, the 72nd Academy Awards, returned to the same grand venue, the Shrine Auditorium, to award the Oscars to the best of the film industry. During this exciting evening, Night of a Hundred Stars Oscar Gala was once again taking place at the exclusive Beverly Hills Hotel. Close to 200 Hollywood stars attended this Oscar gala in its tribute to the Academy Awards. However, Supreme Master Ching Hai was busy with her world lecture tour and sent her best regards to her friends. Many of the superstars expressed their best wishes to Supreme Master Ching Hai. Hi, this is Ken Huffmaker. I don't know if you remember me, Master uh, Supreme Master Ching Hai. But I met you last year, and I understand you're on a tour this year, and I want to wish you very much success and happiness and a very, very safe trip. And I hope we see you next year. Hello, this is hello to Supreme Master Sing Hai. I wish you were here. We miss you very much. All the best to you. We understand uh, probably your timing. It's so busy, you cannot join us uh, for this evening. Always wish you health, yeah. be happy, and always help people like you do. Okay, I wish you luck in your lecture tours, and uh, I hope people gonna meet your meaning and gonna understand your message, which is very important for everybody. And thank you for Armenia, which is very helpful for Armenia people. I hope I see you soon. Master Ching Hai. I'm sorry you couldn't be
speaker this year, but I wish you the very best in your lecture tour. And uh, thank you. It's a free message in my my greeting to you, Supreme Master Ching Hai. Hello, Supreme Master Ching Hai. It is so lovely to think of you, and I wish that you were here. I enjoyed meeting you so much last year, and I know that your joy and your beauty and your wonder that you spread to everyone does the world so much good. God bless you always. I love you. Good night. Wherever you are, I want you to have the best of everything. And you should be back here in California because the weather is great and California misses you, so ciao. We miss seeing you, love, from last year. We hope to see you soon. Hey. That's what it was that I saw. I saw her talking. It's on a channel I don't usually watch. I was flipping channels. That was, that was pretty neat. Every Saturday. I can record it and watch it when I come home because I, I work from 8 to 2 entertainment and sports today. Television show. To Supreme Master, we hope that you're well and that you'll live a thousand years spreading your good words. Sorry you're not here this year, because we had a grand time, almost 200 stars, but your disciples are here and they're doing a terrific job. They're making sure that your word is spread here in the Night of 100 Stars with the Phil Foundation. Hopefully you'll be with us next year. We look forward to seeing you. we fondly reminisce these warm memories of the Hollywood stars and their meetings with Supreme Master Ching Hai. We witness the lasting impression Supreme Master Ching Hai brings to the lives of these luminaries. Her unconditional love and wisdom is a welcome comfort to them. Without the artistry of these entertainers, our lives would not be as interesting. They bring to us a world of joy and imagination. And in Supreme Master Ching Hai, through her inner peace and happiness, these gifted individuals find a sense of spiritual solace. As written by the great playwright William Shakespeare, all the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. And it is truly so. All stars will shine and dim through time. Only the light of the enlightened masters will last to illuminate this earth. When the curtains close, and it is time for us to return to our original home amongst the stars in heaven, we will have a guide to lead the way, a true friend whose light will always shine.